Welcome to Robinson Foundry. In a previous video, I showed how I cast these one-sided brass medallions. They turned out great, but I really wanted to cast something double-sided, and I thought making some pure silver coins would be really cool. Using Fusion 360, I designed a 2 troy ounce coin based off of the dimensions of some coins I found online. I used my resin 3D printer to print out the models which took about 5 hours. These printers use UV light to gradually cure thin layers of photosensitive resin, and they do an amazing job at printing highly detailed models. When the models were done printing, I removed them from the build plate, washed off the excess resin in some isopropyl alcohol, and then clipped off the supports. I fully cured the resin in direct sunlight for a few minutes and then cleaned them up with a file and some sandpaper. I used these models as patterns to make a simple sand mold. For those of you who are interested in the entire mold making process, I'll include that at the end of the video. With the mold done, it was time to melt some silver. I melted these 10 troy ounce silver bars and some silver skulls that I cast in a previous video. It took about 15 minutes in my homemade keg furnace to completely melt the silver. I let the metal heat up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit and then poured the silver into the mold. After letting the mold cool down for a few minutes, I opened it up to see how the castings looked. Unfortunately, these castings did not turn out very well. You can see that the coins are lacking quite a bit of detail in some areas. I figured that by adding air vents, I could fix this problem, but unfortunately my second attempt was worse than my first, and I realized that I was trying to cast too many coins at one time, which limited the amount of metal that could flow into each cavity. So I decided to cast 4 coins instead of 6, to allow the mold to fill faster. This worked a lot better, but the castings had a lot of little air bubbles in them, which is caused by the metal flowing through the mold too turbulently. So I redesigned the mold to fix that problem and tried again. These were by far the best castings yet, but they weren't quite as detailed as I was hoping for. This was my first time casting pure silver in a closed mold, and it might be my last. Pure silver has definitely proven to be a difficult metal to cast with. I used a hacksaw to cut off the excess metal and then cleaned up the coins with a file. Once the edges were filed smooth, I used a sandblaster to give the coins a uniform finish and then polished them up one by one in a wet tumbler with stainless steel media. I had to tumble each one individually because cast silver is extremely soft and putting multiple coins in at once would have caused them to bang against each other ruining the detail. The final step was to use some very fine sandpaper to polish the high spots, and they were done. I 
I think these coins turned out great. The first thing you'll notice when holding these is just how heavy they are. Did you know that silver and lead have very similar densities? Each coin weighs between 63 and 65 grams, which is great because I designed these to be 2 troy ounces, which is about 62.2 grams. Here's all the silver I used for this project. I ended up losing about 20 grams, which really isn't that bad. Most of it was lost during the cutting and filing. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this, and if you did, maybe you'll like some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. So I moved this to the end of the video because most people aren't interested in how molds are made and they tend to leave during that part of my sand casting videos. I used my FDM printer to print out some low resolution coin patterns, which are half the thickness of the resin coin patterns I made. I did this because it will allow me to accurately establish a parting line, which is the dividing line between two parts of the mold and pattern. For those of you who don't know, a mold box is called a flask. The top part of the flask is called the cope, and the bottom part is called the drag. So I rammed up a false drag using the half patterns, and then flipped the mold upside down and let them fall out. This left an impression half the thickness of the resin coin patterns, which I replaced the half patterns with. Then I rammed up the cope like I would normally using baby powder as a parting compound. I flipped the whole flask over and removed the drag leaving the patterns inside the cope. Then I removed the sand from the drag, placed it back onto the cope, and rammed it up again. Making a mold this way using patterns like this is an easy way to ensure that the castings have virtually no visible parting line. For these molds, I used a simple tapered sprue and very simple gating. Alright, well that's it. I hope I made some sense explaining this. It's not all that easy to explain everything that I'm doing here. But let me know if you guys have any questions, and thank you for watching.